In Stack Graphics, it's easy to find the best fitting distribution for a column of data. Take a look at the column here labeled Strength. It contains the measurements of the breaking strength of 100 widgets. To fit a distribution to that data, I can go to the top menu to Describe, Distribution Fitting, Fitting Uncensored Data. Giving it the variable Strength and pressing OK, you can see that this procedure can fit up to 45 different probability distributions. Now I usually start with the normal, see if that fits, and if it doesn't, then move on from there. So I'll just take the defaults here, press OK, and on the Table and Graphs dialog box, I'm going to pick the Analysis Summary, the Test for Normality, and the Comparison of Alternative Distributions. For graphs, I think I'll just look at the frequency histogram. If you look at the histogram, you'll see that the normal distribution does not provide a very good fit for the data. The histogram shows that the data rise fairly quickly to a peak, but then have a longer tail in the positive direction than in the negative direction. Also, if you look at the Shapiro-Wilk statistic over here under test for normality, you'll see that the p-value is well less than 0.05 indicating that the data probably do not come from a normal distribution. Well, if the normal distribution doesn't fit well, I wonder what distribution might. Double-clicking in the Test for Normality pane, I can then move to the bottom left and look at the comparison of alternative distributions. What this will do is fit a dozen different distributions which are often used as alternatives to the normal when you have continuous data. It's sorted them right now from the best fitting to the worst fitting distributions according to currently the log likelihood function. Although if you prefer some other test you can click the right mouse button, go to pane options and then push the button for tests. For example, I know some folks prefer the Anderson-Darling test, so I'll add that to my list and actually have it sort the distributions by the value of the Anderson-Darling statistic. Pressing OK a couple times, you'll see that the largest extreme value distribution is quite a bit better than any of the others according to A squared. Actually, it's the best fit according to all of the statistics that we've computed here. To take a look at that distribution, I'll go back to the histogram, then press the right mouse button and choose Analysis Options. Clicking the checkbox for the largest extreme value distribution and pressing OK, you can now visually compare those two distributions. And you can see that, in fact, the largest extreme value distribution picks up the skewness in the data much better than the normal distribution. To verify that the largest extreme value distribution fits the data adequately, I can go up to the Analysis toolbar and press the Tables and Graphs button. In addition to Test for Normality, this procedure offers more general goodness of fit tests that can tell you whether any particular distribution is adequate for the data. If I press that and press OK, it will add an additional table here with, by default, a Kolmogorov Smirnoff test. Notice the p values. For the largest extreme value distribution, the p value is well above 0.05, which indicates that the data could reasonably have come from that distribution. On the other hand, for the normal distribution, the p value is less than 0.04 because the normal distribution is not a reasonable model for the data. So in stack graphics, it's extremely simple to find the best fitting distribution.